Adam Hewison here, president and founder of iKnow.com and co-founder of Market Club with your Monday update for the 17th of December. This will be my last broadcast for 2012 as I'm taking off for trading for doing silly season. We talked about that last week. Tomorrow, Jeremy Lutz, who would who you know from a Market Club TV, excuse me, will be doing the updates until I get back in early January. So let's go from there. But uh, the big question today is, is the cult of Apple over? You know, Apple just sold 2 million iPhones in three days in China, yet the stock fell below $500 in pre-market trading today. Now, it's up a little bit from earlier, but uh, the question is, what's going on in the smartphone world? And I think what's going on is competition. You know, my son-in-law came over this weekend and showed me his new Samsung Galaxy 3 phone, and I have to say, it's very, very cool. But I still prefer the Apple and because they just build them better at Apple. <laughs> For example, I've dropped my phone a few times without a cover, and it survived perfectly. So you can't say that about the Galaxy Samsung. Anyway, let's go starting with uh, the markets we look at every day. And uh, let's get that right to the portfolio. Here's the S&P 500. The immediate thing I see here is 55, 55, 55, 55, 90, 70, 70, 85. So looking at the 55, 55, 55, they're the equity markets, meaning they're in a trading range. They're really not clear which way they're going to go. And I think that's the big thing to look at here. So let's start with just the S&P 500. Now remember, we talked about the silly season last week and how really the markets are very thin. They can be juiced up both on the upside and pushed down on the downside without any real news coming out. And I think that's the important thing to do. So here we are looking at the S&P 500. Let's put a couple of our indicators on that we'd like to look at. We've got obviously our trade triangles. The long term is still down. The medium term, intermediate term is up, meaning you should be on the sidelines, which means it's the perfect way to enjoy the silly season, not having a position in this market. So we put our Donchian channels on, and also we put in our parabolic, the PSAR, it's parabolic stop and reverse. And you can see we've actually, two things. One, we went out of the trade channel, meaning it normally comes back in, which it did. And when it came back in, it actually elected the PSAR to a sell signal. So really, even today's rally should not be followed, in our opinion, simply because you've got this mixed trend, longer term negative, shorter term, intermediate term is up. So it's kind of a mixed trend. But generally speaking, I would, I'm not enthusiastic about this market, and neither are the trade triangles. The 55, it's a trading range. And of course, when you get a trading range, and we always showed you this before, is the negative divergence. Oops, let me just close that. The negative divergence, which is right here. So here's the market making this way. So that's not a good sign. Uh, not at all. So let's see how this plays out. But generally speaking, I think the, the trade triangles have it right with a 55, meaning a trading range. And I think that's what's going to happen for probably the rest of the week. Uh, so let's clear the screen and go to our next market. Yeah, the next market we're going to be looking at is the Dow. And pretty much the same picture there with the Dow. Uh, we're going to leave our uh, Donchian trade channels on and also the PSAR. And you can see pretty much almost the same picture. So I, I, I can't get enthusiastic about the Dow either. And a lot's going to obviously hang on what the fiscal cliff is going to be. Now, the reason the, the, reason the NASDAQ is up today is obviously because the other two uh, indexes are higher, but also Apple is higher earlier. So that's what pushed this market up. But generally speaking, I think this this is not a good sign. I think Apple is going to regain its former glory unless it comes out with some killer product. Maybe it's Apple TV, a new Apple TV. But certainly the competition in the smartphone, smart tablet place is brutal. And there's some great tablets coming out that are not Apple. But uh, I'm going to stick with Apple products because I like their products. I like the way they interface with one another and all speak to one another. So that's just my personal preference. But uh, my son-in-law, Obviously, likes Android. So let's go to our next market, and that's gonna be crude oil. Now, crude oil is up today. We actually were we sort of little touched the midpoint of the Donchian uh, trading channel. Uh, again, this is good. if we close up here, this is gonna be the highest close we've seen in quite some time, uh, almost about eight or nine days. So you can go back all the way down to here: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. So it's uh, if we close up here, it's gonna be a good close, in indicating that we're maybe this area that we talked about. I'm showing you. We've showed you right here is the base 
And I want to put this on a close only, so let me just uh, get back to a close only chart. Sometimes it's very good just to look at markets that, that are in a close only vein. And let's just clear the screen off for a second. So let's just go to close only, and it's right up here. And there it is. And if we take away the other peripheral indicators right here, it, you really get a good sense of where the market's been. So here we are. We're just going to draw a very simple trend line using our trend line tool on Market Club. When you click here, it shows you a little yellow box in the left hand corner. That's the trend line tool. And you simply just grab it and pull it across. And you can see quite clearly 89 is a really big area uh, of support uh, resistance and the support comes in right around here around 85. So you you're sort of locked in this range. I think if you take out the either one of these areas probably the upside now because I think obviously the weather is getting colder and the, the demand for petroleum products in general will be high. So, so this is 89 on the upside and this is $89 a barrel. This is the January contract. We'll be going to the March contract very soon. And on the downside, you're really at 85. So you've got this broad trading range. Uh, it just The market's just, just kind of do, it's doing this. You need something to be, be more de decisive and maybe it's going to be in, in January when we see this breakout. Either way, uh, my guess is no guess whatsoever during silly season. But generally speaking, you're coming from an oversold condition. And I think we can see this market do a little better. So let's just clear the screen and go to our next market. The next market we're looking at is the And as you can see, we've been really pretty much on top of this. We're plus 90, meaning it's a strong trend. It's the only strong trend, or one of two, I think, that we have right now. The other one's copper. But generally speaking, you are creating some like doji lines here, which is really saying that the market's sort of in sync the buyers and sellers are all sort of like in tandem plus you've got the situation where it is in fact a difficult thin market right now no question about it. but the trend clearly is up if you were betting you want to stay along you can see where we got our long positions here at 29.86 and uh, you can see the the monthly was 27.47 so again all of the the indicators are still positive we are oversold if we put our other tools in there the dungeon trade channel and the parabolic, you can see that we're, we're definitely on the top end of the, the trading range of the parabolic and also the top end of the Donchian trade channel. We could come back, I would not be surprised to just get back to the 130, the midpoint of the, the channel. We are overbought, but the trend clearly is still positive. That's the bottom line. So let's go to our next market. And the next market is going to be gold. Uh, gold is sort of like, ooh, just not going with the thought of no inflation. It's not doing much, but it actually did quite a bit today. It went down to the bottom end of the Donchian trade channel, bounced back up. and But what it really needs to do is it needs to close over 1,700. Psychologically, that would be a lift. Also, the big level to watch, watch on this market, in, in our opinion, is the 1710 level. One thing you can do very easily with Market Club, one of the nice things about it, is you can go charts, and you can see just how this is shaping up. So you can see quite clearly, if we just do a close only, uh, you can see where the market's having problems. Let's just take our uh, channels off, the parabolic. So you can see pretty clearly just looking at this market where the resistance is just draw a pretty straight line across there so you need to get over 1700 that would be a big turnaround psychologically that would be the highest we've seen in several days four or five days and that would give the market a boost in our opinion but we are a little bit overboard and this is on a 30 minute chart now remember there's a 30 minute not as powerful as a daily or a weekly or a monthly but that's really what's going on right now in the market we see we we're under pressure earlier on came back up and uh, we are you know sort of trying to regroup and move this market higher so let's just go back to a daily because I want to show you something there too so we go back on a daily bit closer let's just do a three month and you can see this uh, the 1690 level is a very big level close only but also the 1710 is a huge area too so if you just were to simply uh, let me get my drawing tool if you simply look at this area as so 1690 is like support on a close only basis. And then you've got this level here 
1710 is resistance. We need to break out over those range, either either out of those ranges to get this market moving. But generally speaking, we are in the oversold condition right here, like we were here. So we may see a little pop to the upside. We'll have to see how that plays out. But let's clear the screen, go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is going to be silver. Silver was the leader. It's the one standout feature in silver that I'm looking at right now is went to the chart comes up is the fact that we had a perfect Fibonacci retracement and it's not all the time you see that happening but uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll look at it in just a moment when it comes up and why why we're taking so well I know we're very very busy today for some reason uh, but let's uh, let me go back to the so let's look at copper see how that uh, comes up maybe this will come up faster Anyway, getting back to silver, I'm going to go back to silver because that's the one I really want to see us look at. Silver has is pulled back. The today's low in silver was a perfect 61.8 percent Fibonacci retracement level, and I think that's the important thing to look at. More so than being oversold or anything else, but the the major trend in silver still remains positive. The intermediate term trend, of course, is a little bit negative, but we'll we'll get a picture of this. But for some reason, we're having a problem with this. I don't know why. It's the last day we've we've just been bombarded with. Uh, we've had a very good year, and we thank everyone for helping us uh, maintain our position on the internet and uh, all the kind words we've had and emails we've had over the years. But you can see minus 70. Uh, the we have some improvements coming up on both of these markets. Uh, in fact, all the markets uh, on market could give you an easier, faster way to look and see what the trends are. So again, the only two strong trends, Euro dollar plus 100, just turned, that was a 90, remember? And the copper plus 85, they're in uptrends. Everything else is in a sideways mode, a sort of collection gathering mode, and it's likely to stay that way. Look, I'm going to be going. I'm going to, looking forward to a break from the markets and uh, spending some time with my family. wonderful Merry Christmas and for those of you uh, who celebrate other holidays I wish you have happy holidays as well but uh, on behalf of Market Club it's been a wonderful year thank you so much Jeremy will be with you tomorrow and uh, we'll we'll catch up with you then have a great time